Hello and welcome to This Week in James City County. I'm your host, Renee Dahlman. Today we are once again joined by County Administrator Scott Stevens. Welcome, Scott. Hey, Renee. Great to be back. Glad to have you here. So what is going on? Well, you know, I guess it's really spring for one thing. And I, it's, you know, favorite time of year for me, moving into summer, these warm days. I know there are some still holding on to the hope of winter and snow, but I think we're beyond that for this <laughs> yes. year. Yes. Uh, but no, it's a really a nice time, a lot of activity in the community. Uh, it's really exciting to have things opening back up. Well, we need to be cautious in that and follow the guidelines that are out. Uh, but it, I think our community seems to be ready for that. I, I've seen more people out. Um, and again, our local businesses need you. So do what you can to support that. But uh, really, it's nice. It's much better than we were this time last year. So uh, Absolutely. I'm really excited to be moving into the summer of 2021. So. Yes, for sure. I guess beyond that, one other thing, they tell me, um, you know, a week or so ago, pollen was everywhere. So they tell me it's better today. So I hope that's the case for all of us. I know it's better in terms of what I see. I've been fortunate not to have a whole lot in the way of allergies in my life, but I've had family members that really struggle with allergies from time to time. So I know sort of what the burden that can be for folks. So I hope we're through most of that for those that have allergy issues, but uh, at least it looks like we're beyond the worst of that for this year. So we'll see. Um, in terms of, uh, I guess, start with Board of Supervisors and some of their meetings and at least a high level summary of what they've done. We've held two meetings since our last podcast. So we'll start with our April 13th meeting, really our public comment, public hearing uh, function in terms of their new meeting format. Um, they did hold a public hearing on our FY 2022 budget. Uh, we had a few speakers, nothing too far out, one, one speaker was uh, worried or concerned with the implementation of a cigarette tax, uh, which is in the proposed budget. And another uh, was uh, still just concerned with schools and overall issues there in terms of spending, but nothing that was uh, um, too odd in terms of comments. And we appreciate those comments and other questions we've had related to the budget. Um, they also at that meeting had a few zoning appeals that they approved and then trailers or uh, cottages at the James River Elementary to have additional school space for children there. And, and more of those to come, as I understand it, for the school system and trying to uh, do the correct COVID type distancing in school. So I think we'll have some additional trailers or cottages uh, in future board meetings as school systems trying to prepare for next fall. They also approved the VDOT six year plan in terms of looking forward and projects that we'd like to see or have within the VDOT uh, plan for construction. And then probably the, the other most significant thing is we approved the lease or they approved the lease for another three years with Old Town Medical Dental Center to stay in our human services building. Um, and again, that is, a, we've, we've told Old Town Medical Dental Center that we really are in need of that space. And so we are uh, happy to have them through June of 2024. Uh, but after that, we're hopeful they'll be in another place as we need based on our needs to occupy that space with our staff. And so we're working uh, towards that with them. Uh, moving to their April 27th meeting, which has become their business meeting, uh, begins at one o'clock. Uh, we did have a couple presentations. Uh, the first was recognizing Steve Rose for his involvement and support of installing uh, fitness equipment. And there are three fitness stations installed along the Capitol Trail, one across uh, Green Springs and Route 5, one near the Jamestown Yorktown settlement and then one back over behind Jamestown High School. And again, if you haven't seen these pieces of equipment, they are, they are fairly high quality, very durable. And I think they'll provide a lot of years uh, of enjoyment and I guess uh, something beyond just walking or riding or running, but give you an opportunity to some other training along your, your, your workout. I think they'll, they've been popular so far. I think they'll continue to grow in popularity. And we do thank uh, Mr. Rose for his participation and directing the funding that way so that they could be installed uh, and ready for this year. Uh, it's also Resilience Week, and so uh, there's a, a lot of effort as we've come through and look, seem to be emerging from the other side of the pandemic and what people have had to endure this past year and just recognizing a lot of that. So that will have been ongoing. Uh, we had a presentation from Owen and Illinois, uh, talk, their uh, pilot project called Glass for Good. Uh, they are uh, producing, they produce a lot of bottles in, in our community and send them out um, nationwide. And so they, they always need glass or, or the makings of glass and glass is highly recyclable. And so they would like to have a single stream of glass uh, that, that it, we would bring to them. They would then pay for the recycling and bring it back and produce a bottle. And so we will be uh, educating our community. We, they, Owens, Illinois, are going to provide some containers for us at our three convenience centers. So initially, residents who 
would come to the convenience center with their recycling. Uh, their glass would go into a separate container. So it's by itself. When that container fills up, we would carry it to Owens, Illinois. Uh, they would then recycle it or turn it into glass cullets and bring it back to be turned into new bottles. And so I think that's a really exciting program. I know as we've talked about recycling with members of our community, um, people are, are really passionate about it, but they want to believe that what they're putting in their container or putting in recycling is really getting reused. And we've done a lot to try to ensure that uh, with our current vendor. And I do think that we have good data and we believe that much of what goes into that container is being recycled. There's some things that become harder and sometimes the glass that is broken up uh, and, and is crushed into smaller pieces as part of that commingled process uh, is more difficult to recycle at that point and becomes a, another beneficial fill in our landfill area, which I think is again, a good use of it versus uh, just ending up as part of the, in the landfill. Uh, but if we can promote this with uh, the community and those that uh, reach out to our business community and others of how do we generate more glass as a single stream or separated by itself and deliver that to Owens, Illinois, so they can in turn, um, uh, really go through the recycling process and make it circular and, and produce new bottles. I think that's what most of us want to have happen. And beyond that, they will provide a donation to United Way based on a tonnage of glass received. So that's a, a really a side benefit. Uh, and I'd really like to maximize their ability to recycle glass as well as returning uh, some to United Way to help uh, those that need help within our community. So we'll see. We're a pilot project, one of about their 14 facilities or so across the US, and they chose us. So we're really honored to have that and, and look forward to working with them. Um, the last uh, presentation at the April 27th meeting was an Engage 2045, our comprehensive plan update, uh, where staff sort of pulled the board through a process of where we are to date. We're still moving towards public hearings and planning commission approval uh, with the ultimate hope that the board of supervisors would approve it in late summer, early fall, that we'd have a new comp plan. Uh, and so we'll see. I do want to thank all the participation from the community. We've had a lot of participation through in person just prior to the pandemic and then through online and other resources during the pandemic. Uh, and we've had a ton of volunteer effort from our planning commission members and, our, and our, we have a planning commission working group. They have put a lot of time and hours and discussion behind the scenes and uh, public meetings, of course, but a lot of, of their time and involvement into the process. And uh, we're looking forward to a good outcome there. Um, we also talked about the start of a master plan process for a number of our parks. And so that's a continual effort for us of moving through our park system and taking your input. So you'll have that. We'll have an opportunity to come out to the public and ask what you would like to see in terms of amenities within our existing parks and what to improve. Uh, we have some ideas that we have placed, but we'll have those public meetings over the next, I think, three to six months and then send, bring them back to the board for ultimately for the Board of Supervisors to consider approving that. Uh, our FMS director, uh, Sharon Day, uh, did a third quarter financial update for our current year. And again, our, our financial year runs July 1st through June 30th. Uh, we started the year really behind with COVID. We weren't sure of its impacts last year. So our budget really reflected about a 10% decrease in our overall revenues uh, for the county. Uh, as we've gone through the year, the first quarter was really holding true to that. The second quarter, we saw some modest improvement. And really at the third quarter, we are seeing significant improvement. And the area of revenue that we've talked about the most with our Board of Supervisors is sales tax, meals tax, and lodging tax. Um, and the sales and lodging tax are exceeding what we budgeted for in our uh, in our fiscal year budget. So that's a good thing. We're receiving more money than we thought we would receive from those two sources. Our meals tax has lagged a little more behind that. Um, so in total, the three together, we are well ahead of our estimates, which is a good thing. And we're hopeful those meals taxes will return and reach their pre-pandemic levels. And I think that will continue to go as we have more outlets for um, people to dine as Bush Gardens opens back up and more of their, I say opens back up, they have been open, but as they continue to expand their capacity numbers and open more of their service areas within the park, I do feel very optimistic that that number will return in, in the next 12 months. It may not be quite as strong this summer as it was the summer of 19, definitely will be better than it was the summer of 20. So we're excited about the financial recovery. And with that said, um, and Ms. Day is always a bit conservative, she estimates that at the end of this year, which is again June 30th, that we expect to add another $4 million to our fund balance or savings, which is really a good thing for us in these times so that are somewhat uncertain to make sure that we're not spending more than we're taking in. So we're very aware of that. 
Um, she also had a discussion of the CARES funding. You know, we received almost $13.3 million last year from the CARES Act. We have about $3.7 million left of that that is good through the end of this fiscal year, and we will find a purpose for which it was designated so that we do spend all of that money by the end of calendar year 2021. So we're working on plans for that. And we do have a, uh, our allocation uh, at least identified from the American Family Plan or whichever our, the latest act that came through was. Our allocation is about $14.8 million. And we're working through what those restrictions or requirements to spend that money. It does have an expiration or time of use through 2024. So we have a little more time uh, to sort of figure out what to do with that. But we're very appreciative of those funds coming in. They certainly help to solidify our financial position and uh, we feel very good about where James City County is financially as we've come through this pandemic and turn our, you know, our concerns we've had throughout to our business community and making sure that all of them are able to make it as well. Um, had a couple of contract awards on the board's agenda. They did award a HVAC uh, contract repl or replacement within Building F and our uh, data center area. So that contract is out there. Uh, we had a workforce, Hampton Roads workforce um, council consolidation where we're trying to make that more efficient and better for those that are searching employment in the workforce uh, group able to help with that. We awarded a janitorial services contract for county facilities and then the board uh, adopted a resolution of support uh, for projects where housing partnership is involved and again trying to provide income or housing for low to moderate income residents so that they can uh, live in the community in which they work. So we'll, we'll see where that ends up. The final thing the board uh, discussed and, and approved at their meeting on April 27th um, was the uh, refinancing of um, 13 point million in, in bond proceeds. They were bonds issued in the 2012 timeframe. Uh, we get a better interest rate. So we're going through the refinancing process. And by doing that, uh, the, we're not extending the debt any longer. We're not taking on any new debt. It's just refinancing this existing $13 million debt. But the interest rate savings uh, turns into about $100,000 a year we save for the next 13 years. So almost a $1.3 million savings to the county uh, for the existing debt service we have just because interest rates are much better today or better today than they were in the 2012 timeframe. So uh, I think that gets us through the meetings, um, and at least most of them. Um, with that said, the board approval of uh, the refinancing uh, put uh, Ms. Day and her staff and myself and our financial consultants uh, in meetings with the credit agencies this week. So I will say we have spent uh, over six hours in meetings and many hours before that preparing for those credit uh, agency meetings and with Standard & Poor's, Moody and & Fitch and just trying to uh, have them reaffirm whatever our credit rating is. And we are AAA rated with all three rating agencies. So our expectation uh, coming out of that, that we will maintain that. Uh, we'll know that in a few weeks. Uh, but I do want to commend the hard work of our staff and uh, the preparation and presentation that they made, that it really tells a great story for James City County. And while tourism is definitely a part of our uh, uh, fabric of our environment and our financial plan, uh, the credit rated agencies, at least a couple of them that were new to James City, I think were concerned that because of tourism, we were really in trouble. And what they saw is we have really weathered it very well. We have a good economic base beyond tourism. Uh, we have a good financial plan. Our board of supervisors is very conservative. And I think they were impressed that while Bush Gardens and others have struggled this year, uh, that financially James City County has done very well. So uh, I just want to reassure our citizens that we are in good financial position. And I will hear from those credit agencies soon. Uh, mentioned the budget briefly uh, as part of the board's uh, discussion last week. I do want to reiterate uh, there is no real estate or personal property tax increase recommended in the proposed budget. Uh, there is a 40 cent per pack cigarette tax recommended. Uh, had some discussion with our board, but I think they are still supportive as a whole or at least the majority in moving that forward. And so we're working uh, of that to be a, a incorporated into the proposed budget is does it isn't expected to generate about nine hundred thousand dollars a year so it is a significant revenue source for us uh, and that's not quite a penny on the tax rate but it's really close so uh, it is a significant revenue source for us and one that we just have received the authority from the general assembly to enact uh, up until this year cities have had that authority um, counties have not so this is our first year to be able to enact a cigarette tax um, it also includes a 3% raise for county employees. Um, 
And sales tax for education, if you look at what we're in, in our concern with what we give to our school system, they're about 50% of our overall budget. So they're a significant uh, part of what we fund uh, for James City County residents. If you look at our budget, you could think that we're giving the school system less. That is not correct. We are giving the school system uh, $1.4 million more. Uh, but what we are doing is we have a sales tax for education that has been a pass through, meaning that eight or $10 million comes to the county and then we forward it on to the school system. So it shows up in our budget. And as we uh, talked about this through the year with the school system and, the, and our other partner in the city of Williamsburg, it seemed to make sense to let that go directly to the school system versus having to come through the city and the county. And so that is the change. And so you'll see that in some columns, it looks like we're giving less money to the school system, we are not. And we've tried to notate that in our proposed budget. We will try to notate that in the adopted budget. But if you happen to hear that or see a column that doesn't look right, uh, I just wanna reassure the community, we are giving more to education, a million point, uh, 1.4 million more to our schools from local funding than we have done in years past. And so we have fully funded um, all of the school systems requests, they're operating and CIP. The only exception to that is they had asked for an elementary school uh, in several years out within the CIP and we have not, or I did not recommend at this point, including that. So we'll have more discussion later years. It doesn't affect next year at all. It does affect some future years. And so we'll have more discussion or an opportunity for that before it becomes critical for the school system. Um, and with that, we hope the board will adopt it May 11th. It will be on their May 11th agenda. So we'll see if they are in a mindset of adopting it as early as that, but that is our hope. Um, beyond that, uh, a number of projects going on in the community. Uh, our Chickahominy Riverfront Park is finishing up. If you haven't seen that, it really is much improved. We've not reopened that area, but that I hope is coming soon. Uh, but from the water, which I had an opportunity to, to get out on and just see, uh, really has made a dramatic difference in how that part of the river looks and it's meant to be a safety, aesthetic and environmental project. And I think it has accomplished all those. I think the community will be very pleased with what they see out at our Chickahominy Riverfront Park in terms of the shoreline stabilization. Uh, our marina project, our phase one of replacing some of the dockage and improving the driveways and adding sidewalks and moving the kayak access over has been slowed down a bit uh, due to some issues with the, excuse me, the soil that we encountered being a little, I don't know how to describe it, more sloppy or loose than was expected. So when we were putting things in the water, it was moving some of the, of the soil underwater around more than was anticipated. I believe we have worked through that with our contractor and engineer and expect that they will be back at work with a, a different uh, look that will still uh, create a very nice product for us here in James City County. And it's something that I think our residents and the boating community will appreciate uh, and make it safer and uh, for all of us going forward. So we're hopeful that will be back on track. Might move the completion date back a few months and we'll have a little more information out of that as we get into the details uh, but I am optimistic that, that project will be moving forward pretty soon. Um, and then Renee we've talked an awful lot about COVID and vaccinations and going forward um, and I guess I, I, I don't know that this will be our last update but I do know we've come a long way since January. I feel much better for the community on where we are. I think we're to the point of you know, we didn't have enough vaccine for the last three months. Now we seem to have an abundance of vaccine and not enough people to vaccinate. Uh, I will say we've done a really good job in James City County uh, vaccinating our residents. So overall, who have, collectively we, we have over 70,000 residents that have received at least one dose. Um, and we have 30,000 residents that are fully vaccinated. So those are really good numbers. If you remove the 15 and under age group, uh, it's about 62% of our residents uh, have gotten their first dose. If you look to just the 65 and over crowd, which we were, I think Virginia focused on that crowd because those were the ones most likely to end up in hospitals, ICUs and having uh, say overwhelming hospitals and having more severe reaction to the disease. And for our 65 and over crowd in James City County, the data we have says 97% of our residents in that category have had their first dose. So that is very encouraging of where we were to where we've come. And while it was a lot of frustration for us going and a lot of uncertainty and not being able to answer all the questions, uh, I do wanna commend all those involved over the past three months to make it better. Cause we have had a lot of effort from doctor's offices to the folks that worked our clinic, to private pharmacies, to the chain pharmacies, uh, just a lot of outreach of moving the vaccine and making it available. And it really is amazing that a year later, we have those kind of vaccination numbers for a new disease that showed up uh, within, within our country. So um, 
as I hope the community knows, we have run a vaccination clinic here at the Colonial Williamsburg Visitor Center in conjunction with City of Williamsburg and York County. A lot of our staff out there, a ton of volunteers. Uh, through our clinic alone, we've given over 20,000 vaccinations. So I just think that speaks uh, volumes to the level of effort that's gone into that. The only limiting of the 20,000 really has been that the vaccine supply early on wasn't enough to meet demand, or we could have given probably 20 or 40,000 more doses to the clinic. It was really a well-run operation. I've had a, a tremendous amount of compliments from those that have gone through it. Um, and again, we are still running second dose clinics, but it appears that we will be phasing out maybe as we finish with those second dose clinics over the coming weeks that we will likely be phasing out at least the, the use of the clinic today. And so we're still having those kind of discussions, uh, but it appears that the distribution has sort of saturated the community. You can get a vaccine at your doctor's offices, you can get them at hospitals, you can get them at uh, the chain pharmacies, local pharmacies, there are other clinics uh, moving around, uh, Williamsburg Drug, and our prescription shop have both done a tremendous job of going to a lot of locations throughout our community, meeting the demand where it is. And so we'll continue to do that. And if there's a need for the clinic in the future, we would certainly be able to open it or stand it back up. Uh, but I think we'll have a little more uh, word on that as we move forward in time. And I do wanna thank Colonial Williamsburg for the use of that facility and being so supportive because it, it really um, was a perfect location in terms of parking where it is in the world geographically, and then the ability to operate and flow through the building. So I think we're a really successful effort. Um, I do wanna say we're still talking with the other peninsula localities on more than a weekly basis, uh, along with uh, our state health department and our health district, and then our local hospital systems, Riverside, Centera, Bon Secours, and just have really had a very concerted effort so that we all are aware of what the others are doing and we're making decisions collectively. And that has worked much better the last six weeks or so than maybe it did the first uh, few months of this year. So with that, Renee, I think you've let me do all the talking. And so I guess that's uh, time for me to maybe rest and see if there's anything I missed or anything you need to add. <laughs> well, I don't think you missed anything. I think that right now where we're at in the pandemic is trying to convince those that are vaccine hesitant to step up and to get the vaccine. And so that is going to continue to be a challenge. You know, we keep talking about herd immunity and that's what we want to reach. And that's just going to take some time and we're trying to provide resources to the public of you know ways that you can talk to your friends and family to convince them that this or to make them feel better about their choice right. um, for a vaccine and like you've said there are clinics available everywhere right now vaccinefinder.org is a good place to go to see where the different vaccines are so if you're only interested in johnson and johnson where you can go for that, or Moderna, or Pfizer, or what have you. So, and it's really interesting there. It seems like we turned a corner very quickly. It was, we went from nowhere near enough, as you've said, to way, you know, everyone has the vaccine right. to give. So, and we're not complaining. No, I think that's a good place for us to be. And to your yeah. point, you know, we've had people that after the, they weren't interested in getting a, a vaccine in, in January, February, but now they've seen their friends or family or coworkers uh, really get through it and not seem to have any significant adverse effects. Mm -hmm. And so we've had people reach back out and say, I wasn't interested then, can I do it now? And the answer is yes. And we'll continue that uh, as we go forward in time. And, and I do think to your point, it's making people feel comfortable, helping them believe the science. And you know, I'm not a medical expert. It took me a little while to get there personally, uh, but I do think that um, you know, I, I think it's one of those things that makes sense for most of us. And so we just encourage people to continue to at least be open to the idea. Uh, and uh, as we reach that 70% uh, level, uh, I think that does make it safer and better for all of us. So, mm -hmm. Well, uh, and something else that I would want to add that just slipped my mind. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that happens to folks beyond just me, Renee. So... It'll come back to me. It will. It will. Now, so I'm going to go get away from COVID for a second. Right. Oh, I just remembered, got it, that I know that we've heard stories from folks that for one reason or another, we're still waiting to get a phone call or waiting to get an email from the Department of Health for their first vaccine. We really encourage people that we appreciate the civility I guess that's involved with that and the patients, but we're beyond that stage now. So, you know, do not hesitate that if an opportunity comes and you're somewhere and there's a clinic there, 
take the vaccine. So right. that's right. See, very good. So, and then you're moving beyond COVID, right? Before I, I was, before, I was. I just want to say, you know, we're always here for calls. If you have questions about things going on with county government, I'm happy to at least be the person you reach out to. And if I'm not the one to answer it, I can get an answer for you. My number two five three six six zero three. And again, that'll get you to me, Scott Stevens. I'm happy to. Uh, talk to you. If I, you don't know, answer the phone, leave a message. I definitely will get back to you or make sure the appropriate person is following up to answer your question. So we really do enjoy talking with the community and, and look forward to working through whatever issue or problem or answering whatever question you may have. So again, 253-6603 and of course, area code 757. All right. Well, I did have one other question and this goes all the way back to the board meeting, okay. the most recent business meeting. Um, I watched the meeting and watched Alistair Perkinson do his presentation on the master plans for the parks. And it's very exciting because lots of great ideas of what can happen in our parks. I think it's important though, right, that we remember that this is not a six month plan and all of these things will be done. What is the time frame that we normally look at for park master plans? You know, the, the time frame for developing the plan really is that that three to six month to develop mm -hmm. the plan. And then when you show these amenities on the plan, then your question is, then what? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that depends on dollars, right? Then what happens is the department will use that input in that plan and start putting those of significant dollars into their CIP. And so, or there are capital improvement plans. So if something is 20 or $40,000 in terms of an improvement or an amenity, that can happen as part of the operating budget and happen rather quickly. If something is a, a five or $6 million expenditure, that's going to have to fall in with the other needs and things out there that the community has, or we believe the community has asked us to do in terms of parks and rec or public safety or our schools. And so we work that into a funding plan so that we do have that on our list of things to do over time. So, you know, it could take um, five to 10 to 15 years for full development and build out of a park master plan, or you may go five or 10 years and it's changed enough that some of what we thought we wanted today doesn't really make sense in five or 10 years. You know, maybe there's a, a different trend or a different direction. So we do try to be responsive, but that's the purpose of updating the plan to make sure they're still current with what we think we would like to have within the parks. So I would encourage you is to get involved and be part of it. And then just don't have your expectation that just because we sit on the plan that it shows up in 12 months. It, there is a process beyond that and it has to fall into the funding cycles. But great question, Renee, good clarification. Well, because it's pretty exciting. There's a lot of great ideas out there. So certainly we have a creative community and staff. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we go into these park master plans, not saying, think about the money, think about what we would like as amenities. And then we do bring that back to reality on the other side in terms of incorporating that into where it might fall. Darn that reality always comes into the picture. It, it's there. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> All right. Well, anything else before we wrap up? I think that's uh, good for today, Renee. I said there's still a lot of great things going on in the community. I feel very uh, optimistic and hopeful that our summer will be significantly different than last summer and um, look forward to everybody doing their part and keep us on track with that. And if you have questions, don't hesitate to find us. All right. Great. Thanks again, Scott. Sure, Renee. Well, that wraps up this episode this week in James City County. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, please take a moment to go online and give us feedback. You can find us at jamescitycountyva.gov slash podcast. And while there, you're going to be able to find all of our episodes as well as a form. that You can let us know what you think, criticisms, critiques, anything. We'll take it. Any show ideas, guest ideas, we would love to hear from you. So once again, thank you so much. Oh, and subscribe. That's a big thing. Subscribe. So when a new episode comes out, which we're going to start to do a little bit more regular, regularly now, I'm very excited about that. Um, you'll find out right away that the podcast is there. So once again, thank you so much. And we will talk with you next week.